see how bad the audio quality is on this because I'm outside and I have a gorilla pod and I didn't feel great about holding it so I mounted it to a fence and this is take two of the happy death day review so theater XP is mostly empty there's random clapping from the five or so other people that were in there um, and the the Universal logo had the best logo gag I've seen since Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And that was also a Universal logo, so good job Universal. Um, and I don't remember any of the trailers for Happy Death Day except for Only the Brave, which is a movie about firefighters. And I, there's just one bit of the trailer where this guy is like standing by himself in a forest looking over the trees to like billowing smoke and he's like you want a piece of me well come get some like he's taunting the fire it just seems really stupid um so on to the movie happy death day is a groundhog day movie where a girl wakes up and is murdered the that night and then she wakes up again only to relive the same day over and over and try to figure out who's killing her so she can stop getting killed and live her life so since it's a Groundhog Day movie I made a little checklist of things that you're supposed to hit for a Groundhog Day movie because otherwise why are you doing the loop and Obviously, this is just a few things that came off the top of my head. This is not requirements, nor is it complete. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of elements that I didn't think of that would have been good to include in a Groundhog Day loop scenario. So number one is a distinct series of events that the protagonist can eventually learn the little details to prove that they are going through the same day over and over and over and over. So we had waking up to that annoying alarm, which was not candy shop. Um, then we have the annoying roommate bursts in saying some horrible shit. Then we have going out into the quad and seeing weird emo goth guy, save the planet girl, sprinklers go off on this couple, car alarm goes off and a guy passes out. That's your sequence of events. Fairly early on in the movie, Tree nails the sequence to prove that she's going through the loop. So, it's essentially like a password to be like, believe my story, I know it sounds insane, here's what's gonna happen, now shut the hell up and follow me. So they hit that. Um, they don't hit the point of building an impossible skill because it is actually nailed down exactly how many times Tree goes through. I want to say it's like 17 loops total. Um, so that that's nowhere near enough to build a skill such as playing the piano on a master's level or anything like that. So that makes sense. She still gets the memory thing down, so whatever. Uh, becoming nice. The characters in Groundhog Day movies always seem to start off as assholes in some way and then they just become good people through having to live the loop over and over. And that happens in this one. She learns not to shit on everyone around her, goes for the golden path. The golden path doesn't actually work, so this might have negated being nice a little bit. But it's still there and she winds up getting her guy in the end. And he's, he's shown to be virtuous on his own throughout the loops. It's not re-revealed in the final loop, but Tree knows the kind of guy he is based on all, you know, having to go through this day over and over. So that's fine. We have a death montage where when she first tells Carter that she's been living the same day over and over and she keeps getting killed, he tells her, well, you've got infinite lives. So you have unlimited tries to find out who is killing you. And then the following montage 
set to some upbeat song that I can't remember off the top of my head. But it worked for how silly the montage was. Where, like, she was just getting stabbed, getting drowned. And her, um... Anytime she woke up, she would be feeling the previous death when she woke up. So when she got stabbed, she would be holding her stomach. When she drowned, she threw up immediately as soon as she woke up. Um... And then when the montage ends, it's because she was hit in the head with a baseball bat. And the, it's a good transition where bat hits the head, head hits the pillow. She gets up and it's like she has a concussion. Her vision's all blurry. She actually passes out again, winds up in the hospital, which is where it's revealed that she does not have infinite tries at this. Uh, she is sustaining damage that's beyond the point that she should be dead but each uh, each subsequent try is causing more and more damage to build up so eventually this is my fridge nightmare logic going eventually she would have gotten to a point where when she woke up or woke up it would have basically been like locked in syndrome if the magic of the groundhog day loop would keep her alive until she died so she would wake up not be able to move, die, and then reset time just to do that over and over again. It, that would be insane, and that's where it was eventually going. But it didn't get that far, obviously. Um, and then the last point on the GD list is the fake-out ending. In Groundhog Day, you hear the song one last time as Phil gets up on the final day. In Edge of Tomorrow, time resets, but it's to the beginning of the movie. And in this movie, she wakes up, hears the alarm again, and thinks, oh my god, how is this happening to me? But it turns out Carter was just messing with her. So she's out of the loop. So I covered the deviations as well. And let's go for the twist slash whodunit aspect. I thought from the trailer that it was going to be Carter, just because I was like, it's got to be the best friend. It's always the person you would least expect. But I did not think of Dwight's advice from The Office. It's not the person you least expect. It's also not the person you most suspect. It's the person you most medium suspect. It is Lori with the cupcake in the trailer, which is revealed in the trailer. Um... She hands her the cupcake, and the cupcake has that candle in it. She throws it away. And then there's another clip in the trailer where the killer lights a fire using a candle from the cupcake. And that's shown, again, in the movie, maybe two-thirds of the way through when Tree gets out with the car and Lori finds her in some impossible way, like chases the car down out of town. She even tries to get arrested just for the sake of being safe in jail. <sighs> oh, and then Tombs kind of just came out of nowhere as a red herring, and I'm really glad he was a red herring because that wasn't fair. He wasn't in any of the trailers. He's not even mentioned in the movie for like the first half easily. So that would have been garbage. But they didn't go that way. On to contrivances. I already covered the car escape being absolutely nonsense. And the only other one really is the school's mascot being a baby. Just so they could have that creepy baby mask. That's the only thing I can imagine. That's the only reason you would have a baby as your mascot. I don't remember what the school's name was in the movie, but it was whatever babies. And that just sounds dumb for a sports team. Um, and then. In my opinion, the best thing about the movie is that the cupcake reappears so many times and she never actually eats it until she does the golden path and celebrates by eating the cupcake, causing her to die in her sleep because the cupcake was poisoned. Had she eaten it at any point earlier in the movie, she wouldn't have actually had to go through any of it because time would have reset her and she would have been like, oh my god, I died in my sleep. Or she could have been like, 
cupcake kills her, she wakes up again. She doesn't eat the cupcake the second time and then realizes, oh, she killed me. Like, it would have saved so much time had she just ate the cupcake right away. But it is established pretty much immediately that certain things are off limits for the diet of anyone who lives in that sorority house. So, really good with the cupcake there. Anyways, that's Happy Death Day. Hopefully this one sounded better and looks better than the one of me walking around. I'm not going to upload that one because it highlights my habit of breathing through my mouth while I'm walking a lot. <laughs> so I will see you in the next one.